what I see you doing here is you're bringing out the complementary aspect of that. So in a sense, as you're looking at the internal dynamics through the lens of, of power pushing and, and short power and saying this needs to be emphasized very early in the training, if not at the beginning, right. in, order to, in order to establish the right uh, balance of yin and yang. You know, and, and what I hear you saying is that this was, this was emphasized by Yang Jun in the classical, I mean, didn't, correct me if I'm wrong here, they, they had, wasn't the traditional training people would hold stances for a long time? They would like, they would just basically hold like board off for like 20 minutes or something and, and be invited as, and I've done this myself, be invited to, to examine inside their own mind body where there is holding, where there's tension, where there's, where, there, where it's too yang, where it's too yin. I mean. Yeah. I believe I mentioned this in the invite your wife video, it reminded the audience that we have to keep a developmental perspective on training. Now, Yang Shoujong and all of the young progenitors began when they were seven, six, what have you. And this is traditional for Kung Fu, as we know. So looking at child raising, looking at the developmental stage of a six or seven-year-old, not just physically, but mentally. And we know from six to nine even, there's a huge increase in embodiment of physicality. And just let's just keep that in mind here as we review what we've heard about what traditional training is about. When you're a child, you're sent out to catch flies in the countryside and to bring back a jar to the parent to show them how many you've captured. And what that requires is leg springiness, sharp eyes, hand-eye coordination. And a lot of the training when you're early was based on play. That was the highest level of education, of knowledge of how to bring out these mature skills later in life. So certainly you can imagine that the youngs or any of the lineage holders when they were raising their children, based on their intelligence, based on their idea of of, of child psychology, for example, of, of, of child uh, education, they would give lessons based on listening to where the child is at. And you hardly see, in this case, a parent who is in possession of such great knowledge just submitting their child to these rigors and the punishments and all. So that's not even true. When you're in a family situation, they're thinking of the best way, the most expedient way, and the highest intelligent way to engender this skill to Yang Shou Jung for the long-term gain. Mm -hmm. And that long-term meant from 7 to 14. You can imagine, right? There was, I, I guarantee, he was learning the form then and he was perfecting the form. But only when you get older do you chukhu, do you eat bitter. Because the bitter is already in just all the attention given to learning the form and getting this down. And, you know, I'm sure there was a sense for when the power pushing would come in. But it certainly was not just this idea of holding stances for hours on end. That would be an outside teaching for outside people, I would say. The idea of holding postures, uh, eating bitter, that doesn't come in until much later. Eating bitter for a seven-year-old, for an eight-year-old, is simply having to spend time away from play. <laughs> I'm teaching my seven-year-old nunchucks right now. So I created a curriculum of, of 12 patterns. When he has to do it, he, he hates it. But when he's a superhero, when he's in Ninjago, then they do it there, so he wants to do it. Mm -hmm. so, so you just make it relevant to them but it has nothing to do with this idea of difficult. You want to keep it at play as long as you possibly can. And, and so we forget that because most of us start Tai Chi when we're older. Most of the Tai Chi world, let's just keep it perspective. 
of well, Yang really, Zhou Zhong didn't do that. That is really helpful. Uh, it's something I, I had no understanding of that, that, that there was actually an understanding of developmental stages and, and basically aligning the uh, curriculum, so to speak, to, to in the early stages were curiosity and play and fantasy and fun and all of that, which reminds me of the, of the kind of Steiner education model, basically, you right. know, the Rudolf Steiner That's right. uh, schools that, that, that actually delay the acquisition of, of, uh, of mental. more mental or, or more discipline-based rote learnings and so on, you know, until much, much later, basically. That's right. So, That's right. Uh, oh, no, the, the, this is uh, uh, my other teacher started at six when they developed the chingong, the light skill. Yes. Uh, for example, uh, putting up, uh, erecting a, a board, a uh, foot wide board up a wall and then increasing the, the angle and just letting the kid run and make it a game. In China, children began through recitation. They'd recite the San Zijing, the three character classic, which begins with Ren Zhe Chu Xing Ben Shan. The first line in song classical Chinese is when a person is first born, they're kind. The, oh. the, 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 the Xing Ben Shan, the nature is kind. That's Confucius, Confucius. So they're, they're just getting it through game, through singing. We don't necessarily know that when we start learning Tai Chi, that this was the original Chinese cultural way of, of acquiring knowledge. So would it, would it be fair to say that, that you're bringing some of that a spirit and actually practice of play and curiosity and discovery and, and fun to, to this learning situation? And, would that be... Uh... Yes, that's the feminine learning here. It's number two. Head of ma masculine is serious. It's, re it's real life, you know, sober up, uh, you know, get real with life, the hardships yeah. of life. But the feminine is a mother, let's say, when you, when you create a play date, you d you, you're watching and you know the kids are growing, but they're just playing. We're doing that by instituting in my peak mastery, there's two components of my advanced human training, higher learning platform. One is that what's really missing in today's world is an experience of what that mastery standard is. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to give you because I, I met them and I knew I practiced with them. I know what that is in my body, what it looks like when you fudging. So you're going to rehearse that as both the receiver, because you have to know how to receive it, what that looks like. And as the, the giver, you have to know what that experience feels and looks like. And to know both sides, but to do it in a fun way, which is, is not violent, but to pantomime, to role model, to play act, that mastery, which includes the attitude, which is where we get to imagination mm -hmm. uh, principle, because there's a certain way that the traditional people were very principled. They say, I'm not just going to do it to get the effect. I have to do it right. We were just looking at uh, soccer, eight-year-old under the coach, who was a Mexican professional, he committed a foul to get the ball. And he immediately puts his hands up and said, I fouled him. I, we're just scratching it. Wow, this kid, he's volunteering that he, he knew what the foul was, but he even stopped play. And now that's principle. Yeah. He, he learned the principle from his dad, who's a high-level soccer player, and you see it given to the child. He didn't just steal the ball and go for the score. And so, so we're going to do that in a play fashion because when you come out and you, you, you block and you, you freeze the opponent's center and you learn how to just wait for them to change and then you, you learn to change but, but doing it in a principled fashion, the most important thing in your mind is to do it right because only when you're in principle will you be ready for the next change because you're in the center still. If yeah. any time you, you default to strength, you're vulnerable. Strength or predetermined strategy. Right. 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 Now, now, yes. Yes. A predetermined strategy is part of principle, actually. Mm -hmm. But you hold it. You hold it back because it may not occur. The chance right. may not come. Right. I think the Jewish people know something about that. <laughs> I think you really understand what, this, what I just said. 
Oh, absolutely. I, in fact, I'm just uh, relating it to a more contemporary theme. Like, for example, I'm a great basketball fan and watch a lot of NBA, you know, and mm -hmm. it's rare that a, a person who commits a foul will acknowledge it. Right. And, and when they do, it's almost like a, a sense of relief and, and, a, and a sense of, wow, is, is the person actually owning that <laughs> something they did, you know, as opposed to scowling or, you know, or, or play acting some role or, or, you know, arguing with the ref. Can we translate to the Tai Chi culture in terms of pushing hands? Sure. Uh, I mean, uh, is it is it similar? It could. I, I well, I've never made that connection before. Now, now that we're we're dialoguing, yeah, I think we could make that connection. You know, that it requires a level of honesty and and uh, sincerity. And you know, and if 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 I'm in like in a in pushing hands with a colleague, and, and I've I've seen myself do this many times. Like a, a sudden, like aggressive impulse arises, right? And you know, and it's unconscious. It's an unconscious reaction to something that my so-called opponent has done. I may not be aggressive at all, but but I, my response is that way. Where I need to own that, I need to honor that, and acknowledge it to them and to myself. But I have to acknowledge it. To, I have to be able to see it first in myself. Right. That's what the eight advanced habits uh, are designed to do is to serve as a reference so that you can become self-aware. For what you just described, let's go down to technique here. What you're looking for is just to execute that technique. The focus is on technique rather than the focus on having correct posture. Focus is on the performance, um, say other people watching, for example. I succeeded in uprooting them no matter how I did it, rather than the feminine, which is uh, did you do it right or wrong? Focuses not on just strength, the demonstration of, that you have that strength or the power, but did I do it in principle? So in this way, the the eight agreements or the eight not doings interweave, and they're also. And let me just sort of preempt. I believe one of your questions is that of the eight, there are uh, there are four more technical, physical, the power pushing the uh, short power, the footwork, and the posture. They're external. And then the feminine learning, medicine, imagination, and principle, right, are the four internal. And I've designed them based on the unified field theory that I recovered from China that lays out the complete human system, the unified system, the universal human being. And within that architecture, there are four internal organs and four outer body regions. The heart manifests in the head. The lung manifests in the back. The liver manifests in the waist. And the kidney manifests in the abdomen. This was an invention of the 1800s that wasn't apparent before. And it was a reinterpretation. It brought the eight trigrams inquiry that was first introduced over 5,000 years ago by Fu Xi, the founder of Chinese civilization. The founder of Chinese civilization did not start with something as simple as yin yang or five elements. In fact, my sources tell me that those two came in from the Middle East. And that China is definitely more than 5,000 years old. But for Fu Xi, the founder of Chinese civilization, to have smoked and then cracked the tortoise shell and seen the eight trigrams and putting it down, that's the highest level philosophy. Yet, why would it be the first if you look back in Chinese history? Because that means it must have already had yin yang and five elements in it. Once you look at what King Wen did with it to make the post heaven arrangement. It's a fascinating inquiry, but I think I've recovered it in full so that we understand that, most important, that it was brought back in the 1800s during this Enlightenment era of the 1800s that paralleled what happened in Western science. As you know, Western psychology made its big turn in the 1800s, not just with Thoreau and uh, Emerson, right? the transcendentalists, but with the push to want to legitimize philosophy and to make the field of psychology.
and we have Darwin, and we have physics, Einstein. Every field had this boom, this huge revolution. And my point is that China had one as well, which manifests in what Yang Luchan did, born in 1799, and what Dong Haitren did with Ba Guatren, who was born in 1800. So they came into age probably in their 30s, 40s, 50s. And so in the mid-1800s came these fields that we know of today as the great internal arts. Let's keep history in mind here in the evolution of thought. So I've recovered this revelation that the four internal organs, or the five, but the four main ones of heart, lung, liver, kidney, they discovered outer corollaries in the outer body. And that, I can't tell you how important discovery that was. Because without this revelation that you can now influence the organs through behavior, through posture, that's what the four outer regions represent. You can now use posture to invoke, systematically invoke, rather than the older systems like uh, Liu Yin, the six sounds and so forth, where they sort of, you have to imagine the channels and uh, Ba Duan Jin, the eight brocades, where you have to sort of imagine, but they found postural correlates. And I'm bringing that in to supplement Tai Chi trend that in my research didn't have that. I'm doing research with Edward Burke, who was a Jin Sun student for 30 years, mm -hmm. a private, and he's been researching the uh, Wubu Bafa, the core of Tai Chi, and we're finding Tai Chi Tren uses these great philosophies only in the external use sense, only in the external use sense. They're lacking the medicine. Yes. And that might be one reason for all the searching going on today by Tai Chi people.